What's up, everyone? It is The Beast, and welcome back to The Beast On. What is The Beast On today? The, well, The Beast is on a lot of sunshine. It is a nice day here in South Florida. But I want to talk about the radio industry for a little bit, something I know a little bit about. But before we get a, further into this video, which, of course, is uh, being made in my car, because oh, well, I'll get to that in a second of why I'm just jumping on this right now. Um, but I just want to let you know, you should subscribe to the channel right down there. Hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. That way you get notified when new videos are made and, uh, follow on the social media at Miami Radio Peace. I'll be on the Twitter, on the Insta. If you want, you can find me on Facebook. I may accept you as a friend. I may not. I don't know. We'll see. And, uh, for, uh, if you really love me, if you're really into whatever I give you, whatever that is, uh, you can support, support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Brian, the beast London. So uh, here's why I, I will call this an emergency YouTube video that I'm in the middle of the, uh, gas station parking lot and just uh, reading a couple of things. And, uh, the, uh, the company known as iHeart is uh, cutting uh, like a, a thousand jobs this week. And it's just really sad to me um, what is going on in the radio industry because this is an industry that I grew up loving, um, wanting to be in, wanting none other than to be in radio and communicate that way, right? Theater of the mind, um, and, and develop a listenership and have a relationship with them and, and would it be, be, be a local personality. Um, and I got to do that for most of my career. Um, but as we've seen with so many other industries, consolidation and mergers and corporate crap have just ruined this once great industry. And it sucks because, um, I really do think that take take away all the corporate crap that there's still a place for terrestrial radio, uh, you know, on this earth. That you know, when you're in your car, if you're an adult of a certain age and you want to know the traffic and the weather and the sports and the news and know what's going on, that you'll put on the radio. Um, I also know that. You know, there's still a lot of markets, a lot of cities where bands are coming up um, that have music that they can't get on uh, the big stations that, you know, back in the day, man, I remember uh, being around Power 96 when Kid Curry and Eddie Mix would would have their meetings uh, one day a week and artists would be in the lobby with, you know, dropping off their, their tapes and stuff like that. And that stuff would get on the air and would become big hits. And that's the way it used to happen, man. It was it was just good stuff. It was organic, it was local, it was live. And now what we've gone to in this industry is just a bunch of crap. On the music side, uh, you're lucky if you're in a major market and you actually get a local talent doing a local show for your market. Uh, for the most part, if you're in a medium to small market, you're probably got, you know, one local show. The rest of it's piped in from somewhere else. And it's definitely not local. And the music does certainly not represent whatever's going on in your market. It's picked by some vice president somewhere in some other city. Um, and that's crappy. And on the AM side, um, you know, the AM Sports Talk is still live uh, and, and doing okay. But uh, if you're not on an FM signal as a sports radio station, you're, you're getting screwed. Uh, hint to uh, our local uh, people. Um, but no offense because, you know, the FM signal got taken away from the local station and given to the alternative station, which I, I'm all for. Um, it just, you know, I, sport, you, you, like no one, no one, no millennial, no, no one under the age of, of 45 is tuning into the AM dial. Um, unless, unless, you know, they need to hear a game, uh, cause they're in their car. So, um, you know, sports needs to move to FM if you're not there already. But the other problem with sports is, is being able to sell it uh, because, you sports has the sports and news talk have the highest operating costs 
And that means your ad sales need to be out the wazoo in order to make money. And with the rights that these stations are paying to carry, um, to carry sports broadcasts. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of times it's a, uh, I'm going to uh, go off the beaten drum here, but, um, it's, Hey, I want to show that whatever is, uh, in my crotchal area is bigger than whatever is in the crotchal area of the radio station across the street. So I'm going to get the rights to X, Y, and Z teams. That's kind of sometimes how it works. Um, I can't go into specific details, but throughout my career in sports radio, I can't tell you how many meetings I was a part of where literally the boss, the GM, the vice president of what have you, um, literally just wanted to get the rights to a team just so that the other station didn't get them. Um, but what that meant is now you're taking on a contract that may or may not be a good one, um, depending on your market, depending on the team. And now you have to sell advertising to cover that money. And it's just not going to happen. There's just way too much money being spent and not enough ad dollars coming in. And I don't blame the salespeople. Um, the, what has happened to the way we handle radio sales nowadays is a travish and mockery. Uh, their commissions are being killed, the structures, the formulaic, the formulaic sales, the corporate crap. It just all gets in the way so that these salespeople can't go out there and just hustle and make money for the stations like they used to. Um, man, back in the day before all this stuff, man, I mean, I, when I first started, right, at WQAM, I started as an intern in April in 1997. Phil Shane the uh, amazing soccer announcer. He was an update anchor at WQ at the time, and he was in charge of interns, and he gave me my first internship at WQAM. That was not my first radio internship. I had interned at uh, KISS 108 in Boston and WEEI in Boston before that for a long time. But my first South Florida internship was at WQAM, April 1997. And at the time, WQAM is owned, uh, it had just before that been owned uh <laughs> by the the two guys, uh, Dan and Jeff, who we called the Kosher Cowboys because they were uh, Jewish uh, and also uh, Cowboys or something. Uh, but at the time, it became uh, a co-ownership between Beasley Broadcasting, right? We know the Beasley family. They have since grown exponentially into a, a pretty good-sized uh, radio company. Um, and Greg Reed, Greg Reed, who really started Power 96. Um, they bought QAM and they co-owned it. And it was run like a mom and pop company. And even though the studios were the rat infested, bug infested that the hammer Hank Goldberg used to talk about on the corner of uh, just about at Palm and Sheridan, uh, right really next to where I live in Cooper City. At the time it was just Hollywood. Um, uh, that's, that, that's, it was, it was a great place to work. Granted, I made $5.60, but at the time, who cared, man? I was in radio, and there wasn't this corporate interference and in everything we did, and there wasn't, a, you know, regulation on hours, and there wasn't a whatever. We just worked, man. We just got the job done, worked our asses off, and had fun doing it. And guess what? There was always t-shirts to go like when we did van hits there was always t-shirts and prizes and tickets and tchotchkes everywhere and if you worked at the radio station and you were you know a low level minimum wage employee it, you always got stuffed some some gift cards to restaurants or whatever the salespeople brought in you got some and you know i remember one time i wanted to do something nice for a couple of female friends of mine that really helped me out and I got them a spa day and like all this, like I, you were able to make things happen. And now it's like, you know, at last, uh, when I last left my radio job, uh, in November, man, like there was, there was no giveaway. Like we had, I, I would do these remote appearance. I would do these appearances and just be embarrassed at the prizes that we were giving away. They were like, you know, three cent prizes. And it's like, what are we doing? Uh, we're a major company. We're listening to the stock exchange. And we we can't do better than this. And the answer is no. There's no money for it because of the way this has happened. Now, the other thing that's really screwed radio 
and I don't know this, if you know this or not, I'm getting into the weeds, but uh, is it used to be that if you operated a radio station, you had to have a, a transmitter, a control room, uh, your operating base needed to be in that town, right? Uh, you couldn't just beam in a signal from parts unknown and call it local radio, you know, blankety blank FM. Now that doesn't have to be the case. You could uh, literally uh, have a studio in uh, Poughkeepsie, I don't know why you would, and beam a signal to uh, Boise, which again, I don't know why you would, and call that local Idaho radio because deregulation is lovely. Um, it's just, it's not good, man. We've, we've lost the sense of community because we're losing our community radio stations. And it's horrible for the business. Um, I understand life is about the bottom line and I understand where we are um, as a corporate culture and I think it sucks. Um, but a thousand people are gonna lose their jobs from one company and a lot more from others. And when we're all said and done, there's gonna be 10 to 15 to 20,000 people uh, that were hardworking radio people out of a job with not really anywhere else to go because, uh, you know, if you're lucky, your skills translate. You know, if you're an IT guy at a radio station, yeah, you can go be an IT guy at uh, a bank and be fine. Um, but if your skills are specific to radio, trust me, um, it's really hard to find another gig where people are going to accept you. Um, for, you know, you're just being you and being great at what you do because you have skills that are specific to radio. We'll get into that in my unemployment diaries. Um, the other sad thing is this, and it's about wage growth. And, and I'll get into this at some other time because um, I have thoughts on this. You know, everyone knows about the uh, low unemployment numbers, and that's great. I'm glad pe more people are getting employed. I'm not one of them. But uh, I'm glad more people are getting employed. But if you really look at wage growth, it's horrible. Um, and uh, I mean, I could, I could sh show you graphs and especially when you account for inflation. When you account for inflation, there's like been no wage growth at all. So there may be more people with jobs, but they're not making enough to, to be able to afford life. Here's a perfect example of that. Uh, when I was a board op producer in my previous stint in radio, uh, I got up to the whopping amount of $11 and like 86 cents, something like that. Um, I mean, and, and there was no cap, but like I could work a million hours and no one cared and th there was overtime. And if you worked holidays, you got, uh, you know, double time and there was overtime was time and a half. And it, it was like, you know, Hey, this is how a business is supposed to run. And we were bringing in millions of dollars to add dollars. And it was just great. It was fine. It was wonderful. Um, and I was able to make a living, um, granted, you know, I, didn't really, you know, I just started a family at the time and there wasn't, you know, too many expenses. But the second time around in radio, now granted, I, I didn't start out at the same level, but the second time out in radio, if you applied for the same job that I had back in the day, so let's say from the time that, uh, that I got hired at WQAM in November of 1999 through when I left there in 2009, um, I went from making $5 and 60 cents an hour to making like seven something an hour up to like nine something an hour. And then I got a raise up to like 11 86 an hour. And then a certain person decided to fuck with me and started cutting my hours in half and messing with me and poking the, the bear so that I would, or poking the beast so that I would quit, uh, which I never did. So he got me fired instead, but that's neither here nor there. But the bottom line is, uh, uh, there was wage growth. I was getting raises, making a bunch of money. Guess what? If you start in that same position today, you make $10 an hour and you never get a raise. And you can only work 25 hours a week because if you get to the 30 threshold, uh, then we have to pay for health insurance and no company wants to do that. Um, it's just, it's an abomination. Um, I get uh, the bottom line but man, this used to be such a great industry where you could thrive and succeed and have a great time. 
and now it's just crap. It's just crap. You put on the radio, it just, it's just, and I'm not talking about any particular place where I worked or didn't work or whatever. It's just like you drive around the country, you put on the radio, it's just crap. It, it's, it's not being sold well. It's not being done well. And the bottom line is, and, um, shout out to, uh, a guy that, that does uh, a great job of covering the industry, Jerry Del Coliano. You can look him up. He's got great stuff, although you can't read his articles unless you pay for it. Um, so good luck to you. But uh, Jerry Del Coliano talked about the fact that, uh, you know, radio going to the hub and spoke model, which, you know, for those of you that aren't in the industry, really means that, like, uh, so all your program, all your major stuff that gets done at radio, uh, whether it be uh, marketing, promotions, programming, production, sales, all of all of that stuff. Not on the ground sales, but sales administration and all of that stuff. So what you'll do is like, let's say, uh, let, I'm just taking an example and I don't even know if this is one, but let's say uh, like you work somewhere in the Southeast. So your hub uh, would be in Atlanta and then your spokes are all over the Southeast, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, blah, 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 blah. They get all of their big stuff from Atlanta. So all those jobs that used to do all that stuff in Miami, Orlando, Tampa, Gainesville, uh, Melbourne, wherever, wherever it is, I don't know, making this stuff up, all those people, they get fired because there's no need for them at the local level anymore because some dude in Atlanta is going to take care of it. Granted, he doesn't know what the hell's going on in Miami, Orlando, Gainesville, Tampa, Melbourne, whatever. He has no clue what's going on on the ground. He doesn't know what the listeners want. He doesn't know what the sound should sound like. He doesn't know what the sales things are. He doesn't know anything about it, but it, it, all I know is uh, that they can save money by doing it that way. And it sucks. It's horrible. It's horrible. So I guess the bottom line is um, if you're one of those people that are being laid off this week, because a big company in radio is once again decided to just uh, not care about the local communities they're supposed to serve. Um, and that is the number one thing. Radio is supposed to serve the community. It's somewhere in the charter. Uh, they just don't care anymore. So they're going to screw the listeners. And, and and you know what? I don't know if the listeners are going to really realize it or not. But uh, at some point, someone's going to turn on the radio and be like, why does this sound like this broadcast could be happening from Poughkeepsie or Boise or New York or Los Angeles because it probably is. It's not where you are. Um, or you, you could, you know, you'll listen to your guy on the, on the morning show on your FM station in one market and then be able to click over at uh, 10 o'clock and he'll be on in another market and then click over at three, he'll be on in another market because let's have him do three shows for the price of one because we're not paying anybody. Welcome to radio. By the way, if you don't do it, you're fired. Oh, it's so tough, man. I still love the industry though. I still love the idea of it. And one way or the other, somehow, if I find the money somewhere, if I dig in my backyard enough, find some cash, going to put together a media empire that does not do it this way because people deserve to be treated better and the listeners deserve to be treated better. That's for damn sure. All right. That's my rant on radio for the day. I apologize if I got too much in the weeds, but when I read a story that a thousand people are being laid off from one of the biggest companies in, in the country, really, when it comes to entertainment and media, uh, it pisses me off. So that's that. All right. Who knows where I'll go next on The Beast On. I appreciate you supporting me again. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Follow me on social at Miami Radio Beast and Patreon.com slash Brian the Beast London. If you are uh, willing and able to support, I appreciate it. I'm The Beast. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.